All right, hello everyone, this is Mr. Kirshner. I'm gonna go over our homework, which is worksheet uh, 1.3, all of these limit problems. The answers are down here at the bottom. Um, I wanted to give you help on some of these problems. Um, number one, or sorry, number eight, uh, find a limit as x goes to zero. Well, if I plug in x, it w it's very clear I have zero over zero, so I have to do some algebraic uh, manipulation to make this work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor this. If I factor this, the bottom has an x squared, makes it 20x plus 1. And now that I have that, I do have this term in there that can be factored out. So now I'm left with 5 over 20x plus 1. And now I can plug in the limit. If I plug in the limit, that's 0. 5 over 1 is 5. And now I found my limit. And that's the logic, or that's the theory of what we're going to do on every problem we're going to get it to a point where we can, <coughs> excuse me, direct substitute. However, on the second one, take a look at this. I have ln of 5, which means if I have a base e, what exponent do I need? Well, let me get my calculator because I don't think that's a nice number. So I have about, on the numerator, I have about 1.609. On the denominator, I'm going to have a 0. This means something. This means that there is no limit in this problem. I'm not going to be able to factor it. I'm not going to be able to do some algebra. And I'm never going to be able to substitute it. There is no limit. On the bottom one, if I have these fractions, I could go ahead and multiply by 5x. Because that's the LCD of the denominator. Plugging in negative 5 gets you to 0 over 0. But if I multiply by this, I'll have 5x times 5 is x, plus 5x times 1 over x is just 5. And now I have 10 plus 2x and a 5x. And nothing looks like it can be simplified until I think about this term. That does have a 2 in there. So I could factor that bottom one more step here to this and now those go away. On number 14 I factor this top which is 7 minus x 7 plus x. Be careful a lot of people put the x first and this is an x plus 2 and an x plus 7 and now this x plus 7 and that x plus 7 are gone. Now you can direct substitute. On this one well I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, root 25 minus x plus 5 over root 25 minus x minus, or plus 5 here. I'm going to leave the bottom the same. Don't mess with the bottom. It usually does nothing happens with the denominator. But up in the numerator, this is a minus b, a plus b. The result is a squared, which is 25 minus x minus b squared is 25, and those middle terms, those a's and b's, would go away. You can simplify down here. Um, what do I have in the numerator? A negative x, because that's 0, and an x. 25 minus x, plus 5, gone, gone. I'm left with a negative 1 in the numerator, sub in the denominator. And the last one, um, it's going to take some trig identities here. Sine squared can be switched into cosine, because if we remember this identity, sine squared, cosine squared is 1, sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So this can go in the numerator, 1 minus cosine squared x over 1 minus cosine x. And now we get there and people get stuck, but again what you see up here is a squared minus b squared. This is 1 minus cosine x, 1 plus cosine x, all over 1 minus cosine x. Those expressions can go away, and you're left with 1 plus cosine x. Do some direct substitution, you'll have your answer. All right, hope this helps with your homework. If you have questions, we will go over them in class.